One of the main roles of a facilitator running a workshop is to take a massive amount of information and to visualize this for the people in the group. That's honestly one of the biggest benefits you can bring to a group as a facilitator, because when people are talking, when people have ideas, if they can't see them, they really can't get a good grasp on how to make decisions, how to prioritize things. But when you're a facilitator, whether you're doing it remotely or in person, what you're trying to do is essentially visualize conversations, visualize data so that people can more simply see the clusters, see the topics, make decisions, prioritize things, brainstorm, et cetera, et cetera. Data visualization is really a core part of the role of a facilitator. What I wanted to show you here today, it's something we haven't tried on a YouTube channel before, but I want to show you inside my private community, Workshop or Master, where I run weekly two to three hour Zoom calls with our community members and answer their questions. What you're about to see is me answering the question of one of our community members who works for an NGO. And she was telling me, okay, I've got all of this data from the client. They've sent me all of these documents. What am I supposed to do with it? What can I do with all of this information before the workshop? And the answer you're about to see is me explaining to her how I would approach this, how I approach receiving a lot of data from clients and then visualizing it. And I hope a glimpse inside one of these private coaching calls is useful for you. So let's jump into it and watch me coaching someone on visualizing data in a workshop. Hey, hi, Jonathan. Um, I've Hello. been in the community for about three weeks and loving hey, it. You're fresh. And I'm very fresh and um, so much um, help in the, in the Facebook community. Thanks to everyone. I plugged a few urgent questions in and got um, overwhelming response. So it's been fantastic. Um, my question is probably a broader approach that you may take. So I work as a consultant. My area predominantly is healthcare sector, public, government. And offer, often I'm faced with a request to facilitate a half-day workshop. We've got either piles of data to go through where key stakeholders in the room need to align. So um, I, I ran a workshop a couple of weeks ago. There were 60 action items that went to consultation broadly and 25 stakeholders from very different lens approach. Some were hospital, GM, some were policy, um, uh, uh, you know, controlled policy within the government, some controlled funding. So the lenses in the room have very different individual, sometimes conflicting um, perspectives. So we had this pile of data with lots of, you know, 25 stakeholders, and they wanted us to, first of all, align that everyone was happy with the 60 actions, and then come up with the top 10 priorities. Um, so, um, you know, it's either that kind of workshop or I'm going into a workshop in a couple of weeks where, again, 25 stakeholders from different lenses in government, um, where the data is kind of a little bit more piecemeal. But again, the outcome is half a day workshop. We want alignment and um, a way forward in terms of, you know, how do we bring a position that we can bargain at the table. So my question is more around, you know, do you have a general approach to these kind of um, requests in terms of, it's not blue sky thinking and creating and, and you know, building and, and, and kind of thinking about ideas and solutions. You've kind of got hard data already and it's more about getting that alignment. Yeah, so for us at AJ and Smart, um, the types of workshops that would fall into would be kind of like strategy or leadership retreats or things like this where maybe it's not about coming up with anything new it's about getting everyone on the same page with a lot of stuff that's already accumulated um, yeah. and i just see my job in that case as someone who can visualize the mess and help them understand um, basically take what is very hard for a human to parse and understand and turn it into something that's easier for a human to parse and understand. Uh, and that's a big part of visualizing the data. Um, and that, that's the first thing. So usually what I would do is, so would a lot of these be in person or online? Um, at the moment, they're in person. Okay. Yeah. So generally when the clients walk into the room with me, I've already visualized a couple of things for them um, because I've been, I have taken the time to try, I, I usually get the data a little bit before the workshop. I assume you'll also get it yeah. a little bit before the workshop. And I'll look at that 
And based on the different visualization models that I understand, I start to essentially literally draw those up on the walls. And so a really common thing is that I'll draw a map classic design sprint map and try to draw out like the systems that are happening in this situation that we're talking about. What I'll also try to do is create a cluster of challenges. So if there's potentially, you said there's 60 topics. Well, one very simple thing I'll do is write them all up and visualize them and make it clear, not in any prioritized order, but simply visualize that for them versus having that all in different slides and stuff, which is hard for humans to really parse. Um, if I can also cluster, so with those 60 things, the first thing I would try to do is also think about, can those 60 things also be clustered into smaller groups? So is one of these clusters around healthcare, is one of these clusters around whatever, you know, depends on your topic. And even just the act of them walking into the room and seeing that I've done that almost informational hierarchy clustering, um, is a really good start because mm. they already have the feeling, holy shit, this person has taken the mess that's kind of in all of these documents and visualized it in a way that me as a normal human can can just scan and understand. Um, and I think my job in this case is not necessarily to make any decisions for them, but to make it just easier for them to be able to make decisions. Um, by being able to see all of the the options. Um, yeah, so, so you mentioned like, is there something that I would do every time? The answer is no, because it really depends on what they want out of it. Um, but the first thing, like if I can think about something that I would do every time in terms of prep work, it would be trying to visualize everything that is visualizable, um, mm. even before knowing necessarily what it is we want to get out of this. And just the first like 15 minutes presenting to them, here's your data. It just yeah. looks a bit easier to understand now. Um, and then often, you know, it, it will kick off into, so if, if your goal is to come out with a smaller amount, like you can, like I like to be really simplistic about things. I'll say something like, here are, and this is really common in the product space as well. You'll have a product team coming together like a Twitter or something, and they'll say, here's like the next five years of things we could be doing. Mm -hmm. um, there's like a hundred features here uh, and they're in all different spaces. This is the B2B stuff. This is the B2C stuff. This is like all of this other stuff. Here it all is. I'll, I'll say to them, here's everything. Um, what we wanted, what we want to leave with today is less stuff on this wall. <laughs> like maybe mm -hmm. there's even two spaces. It's like, Here's the everything pile. Here's the priority pile. You can see it's empty over here. What we want to leave here today with, if if we leave here today with like some post-its from here over there, I'll be happy and you can be happy because what we've done is just gotten some things in order. Um, so yeah, I just try to keep it very, very, very basic. And I really, with an exit, with a, with a challenge like this, People also always want to be heard. Like, and the cool thing is, if you walk in, if you are man if you manage to um, give them the feeling that you've present looked at their data and presented it to them, they also feel heard. They also feel like this person listens to me, um, even if you haven't talked to them yet. And then it's just down to the very specific exercises you need to do. So, you know, if you're trying to prioritize things, I guess. Um, effort impact scale action board is always a classic good old yeah. McKinsey exercise to get things um, in order. So you could just do a massive one of those, but yeah, then it, then it just depends on the, the specific challenge. Hopefully that video was useful for you. If it was, it was from the program Workshop or Master. This is our highest tier program for facilitators. We have a course, we've got private coaching calls, we've got a community, it's really amazing. But if you're a facilitator, if you're interested in growing your career as a facilitator, forget about that for a moment. I've created a free one hour training that will teach you how the top 1% of facilitators in the world facilitate workshops, build workshops, and find clients so that they can get a high day rate. That link is below, it says free training, just click on it, watch the free training, there's no catch. And if you like that, you'll also see a preview of the program. You can check it out. Everything's down there below. Now, I'd love to know, if you're watching this video, if you got this far into the video, 
Was seeing something like this useful? Was seeing inside the program useful for you? Are these types of discussions, are they too nerdy or, or are they fun? Let us know in the comments so we know whether to do more of them or less of them. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.